you hate to push the panic button, but on the other hand, you can't like what you're seeing if you're an Oklahoma Sooner fan either. Boy, is the month of February sucking the big one? Uh, no question. Three of the last four games have been Sooner losses, and Sooner certainly didn't play their best ball against Kansas on Saturday, but still had a chance to win. I know Kansas didn't play great either, but, but still, um, you're thinking, all right, you lost to a highly ranked team. You didn't drop in the polls. Lesson learned. Go to Lubbock on Wednesday against Texas Tech. Get the win. Well, the shooting against the Red Raiders was worse. And Buddy Heald, um, yeah, he ended up with 16 points, but shot one of the worst games he shot in a very long time. And the Sooners really needed him because they certainly couldn't get any production from the inside, which lately has been nothing new. I mean, Kadeem Latin had about as many points as I did, which was zero. Spangler only had five. Um, again, the Sooners getting outplayed in the paint. And you know, Isaiah Cousins was not much of a factor. Um, Jordan Woodard was really the only one last night that was that was hitting more of his shots than Michigan. I mean, he was he was real good last night. But the Sooners as a team, they were bricking a lot of those three point shots, twenty six percent from outside. And last night, the, the the two key stretches were the final two minutes of the first half, final two minutes of the second half. To put it in a nutshell, Sooners were up five points uh, about two minutes to go before halftime. Tech goes on an 8-0 run. So Tech goes up three at halftime. And then the Sooners, where it looks like they might be in a position to get out of Lubbock with a win, up four with 220 to go. They give up a three. They turn the ball over. Tech cashes in with the bucket. And then they hit three out of four free throws down the stretch. The Sooners um, only get um, two points in those final 220, not enough. They lose by two. Give credit to Texas Tech. Tech played like that was an NCAA tournament game because for them, they're trying to brush up their resume. They're trying to polish up their resume to get to the NCAA tournament. You would have laughed a few weeks ago if you would have thought that Texas Tech would have a shot getting to the NCAA tournament. But they've now won against um, three top 25 teams. Remember, they blew out Baylor in Waco just a few days ago. And now beating the number three team in the country, you know, Tubby Smith, you know, he's, he's making himself a candidate for Big 12 Coach of the Year. And Tech's going to have a sporting shot at getting into the field of 68, which would make it seven teams from the Big 12 um, to get into the uh, tournament. But still, you know, you, you look at the Sooners and you, you're thinking, what in the hell is going on? And... People are going to have their theories. I'm going to have mine. People are going to agree. Some will disagree. This team looks tired to me. This team looks like they're tired. And again, I give credit to Tech for winning this game. They wanted it more. Their bench outplayed Oklahoma, um, which lately I think every bench outplays Oklahoma. I mean, the, the scoring discrepancy is not even funny. 25-7 to 7 in favor of Tech. Ross, um, Aaron Ross of Tech had 17 of those points. Uh, so, bench play w w was a key in the game. So, I, I do give I do give credit to Tech, but to me, fatigue is a big, big factor. Um, it takes so much to sustain your your efforts throughout the season. In the first half of the season, the Sooners were shooting, you know, anywhere from forty five to fifty percent from three point range, and that statistic has really declined in this month, the last few games. They're not hitting three-point shots, okay? They're still taking them. They're just not hitting them. Last night, they were 6 of 23. That's barely more than 25%. Did they even hit a three-pointer in the second half? I don't think they did. It was that bad. Buddy healed hardly a factor in the second half. Again, I don't think it's because of lack of effort. I just think right now their, their stamina is, is, is gone. That team that killed Villanova, that team that killed Wisconsin, you know, that team that in Lawrence, Kansas, even though they lost a triple overtime but played like champions, I don't know if that team's coming back. And now the Sooners, they're out of Big 12 contention. All right, they're not going to win the Big 12 regular season. And if, in case you don't know, one of the eight sub regionals this year for the NCAA tournament is in Oklahoma City. And to assure yourself, 
um, to for Oklahoma to assure themselves of playing close to home, playing in OKC, they need to be either a number one or number two seed. And right now, that's in jeopardy. And if they're not, then they're at the NCAA's mercy, the committee's mercy, to be shipped somewhere else and have to travel further for those first two rounds. So last night's loss wasn't just a bad loss. It has incredible repercussions, okay? It has future consequences. And speaking of the future, the Sooners play at West Virginia on Saturday. A team that knows a thing or two about stamina because they will pressure the hell out of you. They know man-to-man -man defense, and they're pissed after losing in Norman a few weeks ago. So the opponent that the Sooners are playing this weekend could not have been a worse draw. And I'm afraid the Sooners are going to get blown out in that one unless we see a different brand of ball. And I think they'll, they'll, they'll play their damnedest, but I don't know how much gas they have in the tank right now because it's not reading full. The Sooners right now remind me of that marathon runner who was kicking ass for the first 13 miles of the race, for the first half of the marathon. Good pace, winning the race, leading the pack, but for the last half of this race is losing stamina, falling back, is tired, and has lost the lead. And that's right now what's reminding me of this team. Because when you're not hitting your shots from the outside, you need to get production from the inside. And that's not happening either. Ryan Spangler had five points. Kadeem Latin had nothing, and the bench last night had very little. Giving up second chances to Texas Tech. Th this team, Long Kruger, they got to figure something out. Because more losses are in store if we see that brand of ball played again. Sooners are 20 and 5, or 8 and 5 in Big 12 play. You got West Virginia on the road. And by the way, you got to go to Texas later on. You host Baylor, um, who has big guys, and, and so you, you favor Baylor um, in the in the paint in that matchup. Um, you got Oklahoma State and and, uh, and TCU. But right now, um, th this Oklahoma team is hard to trust. Again, I don't think it's because they're not playing hard. I just don't know what they got left in the tank. It's a long season, and right now the Sooners are finding out the hard way that it is a marathon and not a sprint. And the production they were getting at the beginning of the year, it's dropping. In field goal percentage, three-point percentage, and especially in point production. And have you noticed something, too? They're falling behind at halftime, I think like in the last four or five games in a row, where they go into the locker room trailing. So they're not setting the pace for these games either. They're in catch-up mode, and that takes even more effort to try to make up. So, not saying for the Sooners that this season's a lost cause. There's still time, but no question, there's been a change. And it needs to change quickly back the other way. We'll see if the Sooners can do it, but I'm not too optimistic about Saturday in Morgantown, West Virginia. They're right now sole possession of second place in the Big 12, a game behind Kansas. Right now, the Sooners are two games behind the Jayhawks and pretty much all but out as far as the Big 12. You give credit to Texas Tech and Tubby Smith um, for pulling out in the end. And for the Sooners, whew, who the hell knows how the rest of this month's going to fare. We're three and a half weeks away from Selection Sunday. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm just jumping the gun, but right now I don't like what I'm seeing from OU. Bye, everybody. But, hey. Good game by Jordan Woodrow, though, in the losing cost. Thanks, everybody.